soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you very much for this beautiful day you have given unto us. We thank you for the privilege you have afforded us to come into this usual place to worship you. We are grateful for all your blessings you have blessed us with during the past days of the week. And as we seek to worship you today with our songs, with our prayers, and with the ministry of thy word, we pray, dear Lord, that you will accept our worship of you, and you will draw each worshiper closer to thyself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, Saints. All right, I'm not too sure if you can hear me. Let me uh, try that again. Is the mic turned up? Good afternoon, Saints. Good afternoon. That sounds better. I'd like to uh, wish everyone a happy Sabbath and uh, a, a joyful worship experience with us. I'd like to extend a welcome to those who are viewing our live stream online and uh, pray that the Lord will richly bless you wherever you are today. I'd like to welcome our um, regular members and our visitors. Um, I did notice that someone has just walked in, uh, Sister Yvonne Nash. Welcome, my dear. Long time no see. And uh, I see you brought a visitor with you, so we'd like to welcome you also. Uh, I don't have your names, but um, as members, we will greet you once the service is over. So I would like to say um, I've had a good week. The Lord has blessed me that um, I am here in my right mind. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping the rest of you also are in your right mind. So we, we have a lot to give God thanks for. So I'd like us to um, show our appreciation in our worship. Let us sing heartily and worship God. Now, we've had some good weather this week. Some people are saying it's too hot. And we know the best is not, uh, the best is still to come. They say we're expecting even hotter weather tomorrow and Monday. So if the Lord has spared our lives, let us enjoy uh, the days that he gives us. Um, today, uh, the word will be broken to us by our minister. Um, and he's no stranger to us, Pastor Bruce. Uh, so we, we pray that um, he will have another a rich message for us that we can all take something from it. But to begin our service today, uh, we will stand and sing hymn number 625, Higher Ground. Our next hymn is 625, Higher Ground. Lord, 
the throne of God. I'll ask that you'll take a position of reverence. Uh, if you can kneel and kneel as we go to God in prayer. <coughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so mighty grateful to you for your blessings to us throughout the past days of the week. We are thankful that you have kept us through the power of your might. We are thankful that in you we lived, mm -hmm. we moved, mm -hmm. and we are thankful that today we can say in you we live and have our being. Yes. We want to thank you for leaving the glories of heaven. Mm -hmm. coming down to this sin-cursed earth and dying in our stead mm -hmm. so that we can have life and have it in abundance. We are thankful to you for the blessings that you have set aside for today. We pray that you will endow us from heaven above and fill us, Lord, with the power of your Holy Spirit. Yes. I want to present to you all those who are now bowing in your presence. We are thankful that in you there is life, mm -hmm. in you there is health, mm -hmm. in you there is wealth, and is, in you there is sustainability. And so Lord, all of us here have our different challenges, but we are glad that you did not differentiate when you said that we can cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. We are thankful that you are a great physician. And there are those of us here who are sick but we are glad, Lord, that there is no sickness that you cannot heal. Yes. And so we bring the sick ones to you and ask that you will touch, you will heal, and your name will be glorified. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to provide because you say that you will provide for us according to your riches in glory. Yes. We are thankful that you say that the earth is yours mm -hmm. and the fullness thereof. I'm thankful, Lord, that you are mindful that some of us may think that money is not involved. So you say the silver and the gold is yours. And you promise that you will provide for us according to your riches. So, Lord, we are asking that those who are struggling, whatever the circumstance may be, that you will meet them at their appointed needs. We are thankful, Lord, to you that you say that we can call upon you when we are in trouble. And you say that you are very present help in times of trouble. Yes. And so we are thankful that you are a God answering prayer, a prayer answering God who takes our concerns and meet them out for us. We pray that you will help us to trust you explicitly, give you our concerns, and leave them with you. 
We studied about the children of Israel and their short-sightedness and their short memories. We pray, Lord, that you will help us, that we may uh, not be like them. But when you do for us, we will remember and give you thanks and glory. We are thankful for the, the blessings of the day. The sunshine. Mm -hmm. Lord, we, we complain a lot. When there is sun, we say it's too hot. When it's cold, we say it's too cold. But we are thankful that you are still God. Yes. And you will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So help us, Lord, to accept, appreciate, and, glow, and rejoice in the glories that you have given us. We present the speaker to you and ask, Lord, that you will bless him from on high. Mm -hmm. You have used him in times past, but today we pray that you will use him mightily. Mm -hmm. Lord, I ask that you will give him clarity yes. and simplicity yes. to present your word so that the simplest of minds here will be able to hear, understand, and make that important decision to accept you as Lord and save you from sin. Lord. We ask that you will bless the offerings that have been given. And as we give, Lord, I pray that we will not give, only give of our means, but we will give ourselves entirely to you to be used in your cause. Mm -hmm. Take full control now, we pray. We ask that you will bring those who are listening via the airwaves. Yes. Bless them also. Give them clarity. May they understand. And the message will draw all of us closer to you. I pray that when you come in the clouds of glory, that all of us here, your people everywhere, will be ready to go home, to live with you. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I don't know if they have one. I don't know if they have one.
As I said before, um, uh, the speaker today is our pastor, but I noticed that um, the elder before me said that he's clothed, that he's in his right mind. He didn't say have on clothes. <laughs> he take it for granted that he'll see that he have clothes on. So he's assuming that everybody can see. And so I just want to take this time to introduce our pastors there. Um, the elder said that he's no stranger to us, but I believe that there is somebody here who don't know him. Rutland, do you know him? No. Okay. Now I, I just called somebody by the name that the elder didn't know either. <laughs> and that's because um, when I saw her walk in, when I saw two people walk in, one I haven't seen for a while, I was wonder what has become of her because that's the one I normally ask about you. And I couldn't ask no question because I wasn't seeing him. You went missing. You went missing in a, yeah. But you're back and you have brought her back with you. That shows that you're a good witness, sir. <laughs> Witnessing well. I thank you for bringing her. She is it's a Rutland Sullivan. That's I'll call it by that name. I don't know if you have changed it. Okay. So it's a, a Rutland Sullivan. And she's, if I'm calling her by all her names, you know that she's from Montserrat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I know her from, um, should I say a long time ago? From small, or she say from small. Yes, and um, I haven't seen her for a while. We're happy that you have come today. And um, I pray that God will bless you as he has been blessing us. And um, you have come in time to get a special message from Pastor Bruce. His name is Pastor Astor. If you want to leave off the pastor, he's Astor Bruce. So make sure you remember that name so when you talk about the sermon, you can say who preached it. And so Pastor Bruce will be speaking to us today. And we pray that God will bless him. And the message will burn sins from our hearts and draw us closer to God. Pastor Bruce, the time is now yours. People, please hear ye him. Good afternoon to everybody. I, I know that we are still living in COVID time, but I'm going to ask you to look to the person next to you and say something beautiful to them, something pleasant, like it's lovely to have you in church today. It's, uh, you know, whatever you want to say, say something nice to somebody close to you. <laughs> well, I'm always in good company with you guys. <laughs> Lovely to have you all by my side. <laughs> That's right. Indeed, it's a, it's a beautiful day on the outside and I, I, I still believe that the best place to be is in the presence of God. Amen. The psalm, it says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy and at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And so I join with Elder Horatio and welcome all of you to church today. And those who are online, we welcome you to Bilston Seventh-day Adventist Church. And may God be with us as we continue to seek his face.
I want to speak to you on the subject keeping your balance in the race. Let's get this water close by. <clears throat> keeping your balance in the race. Let me invite you to turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Is it is it okay if I take off this thing here? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling Hmm? Right. Mm -hmm. And this side. Okay. <laughs> Am I still good to go? I, I am going to ask your permission because it, it, the heat is very much up here. So if you don't give me the permission, I'm taking it. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Let's go together. It's on the screen. It says, Wherefore, we are also... That's right. Let us... And the sin with that so easily beset us. And let us run... Uh-huh. Let's let's go to it again, please. Let's let's go to it again. Let, let's take our time and read it together. Let's go again. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Lord, into thy hands I commit my life, I commit this message, I commit your children. Speak to me, speak for me, and speak through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Keeping your balance in the race. At 7 p.m., on October 20, 1968, a few thousand spectators remain in Mexico City Olympic Stadium. More than an hour earlier, an Ethiopian looking as fresh as when he started the race crossed the finish line, the winner of the 26 miles, 585 yards event. Suddenly, the remaining spectators heard the sound of sirens and police whistles all eyes turned to the gate. A long figure wearing number 36 
and the color of Tanzania entered the stadium. His name was John Stephen Akwawi. He was the last man to finish the marathon. He had fallen during the race and injured his knees and ankle. Now, with his leg bloodied and bondage, he grimaced with each hobbling stepped around the 400 meter trap. The spectators rose and applauded him after crossing the finish line. Akwari slowly walked off the field. Later that day, a reporter asked him the question on everyone's mind. Why did you continue the race after you were badly injured? He replied, my country did not send me 7,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 7,000 miles to finish the race. Amen. What a testimony. This is important to us, the children of God, for it's expected of us to have great beginnings as well as fantastic endings. We must stay in the race until we reach the finish line. I knew a long time, even as I know now, that if the people of God can run the race that is set before them with focus by focusing on their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they will eventually reach the finish line. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verses 24 and 25, we are told, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run, that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we an incorruptible. And then First Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19 says, For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the traditions of your fathers. But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spots. Amen? Amen. This lamb that Peter talked about is Christ. Christ, the Lamb of God, which what taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus, dedicated by God to be the Savior of the world. He was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All heaven was given to the human race in one gift, the gift of Jesus to, the, the, to, to this world. So that the grace, the Bible says, so that the grace of God, which was, which was given, 
the grace of God which bringeth salvation and which was given to all and which appeared to all men. This grace, this grace of God, we are told appeared to Moses. You remember Moses? Moses, he, when he became of age, we are told, he chose, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh and chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the, the, the what? Yes. So, so he, Moses, chose to, be on the, chose to be on the side of God than to enjoy the season of sin for just a short while. Watch this. It was the grace of God that had saved Rahab. Do you remember Rahab? Rahab was saved by grace through faith. Praise the Lord. So much so that she became a part of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. It was because of the grace of God that Gideon and Barak and Jephthah, David and the prophets were able through faith to subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, walked valiant in fight, turned the flight of the, of the armies of the alien. Oh, brothers and sisters, it was the grace of God. You see, God does his best work from seemingly hopeless situation. You didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. Let me, let, let me take a drink of water. God does his best work from seemingly hopeless situations. When everything else when everything else has failed, that's when God shows up. Hmm. With God, what seems like a hopeless situation is not, is not only possible, it's favorable. Amen. Amen. Only God, hear me somebody, only God can turn a mess into a message. Yes. Only God can turn trials into triumph. Yes. Only God can turn a test into a testimony. Yes. Only our God can turn a victim into a victor. Yes. For he who promised is faithful. Come on, say amen. amen. He who promised is faithful and will not and will always be faithful no matter how hopeless the situations may appear to be. He will always be faithful. It was the grace of God at work in their lives when many of God's faithful heroes were stoned. They were sawn asunder, were tempted, and they were trampled. They were slain with the sword. It was the grace of God that appeared to them that they wandered about in sheepskin. 
and goat skins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. They wandered in desert and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And brothers and sisters, although they had run their race faithfully, they had not received the promise. Mm. For the Bible said God has a better a better purpose, a better plan in place. They without us will not be made perfect. <laughs> They're waiting for us. Oh yes, hear this everybody. So, so we have just read a while ago in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. He says, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us. And let us run the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, what? Endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down where? At the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible says, where for? That's the first word that we see here. Let, let, let's do a, a, a bit of fleshing out. Where for? Wherefore, in this verse, constitute the author's conclusion of chapter 11. The chapter 11 we call the heroes of faith. So wherefore in chapter 12 is concluding. It's the author's conclusion of chapter 11. It says wherefore. So it constitutes the author's conclusion of chapter 11. And then he went on to say compass or surrounded. Wherefore Wherever we turned to compass us around it, wherever we turn in sacred history, we find witnesses to the principle that faith and faithfulness triumph over every obstacle. Mm -hmm. And he said, so great a witness is so great a cloud rather so great a cloud or witness or host or or, or, or witnesses that's what it says so so great a cloud is a, a, a phrase to mean so great witnesses or so great a host so watch this now it says the witnesses hear me somebody listen to this the witnesses are the uncounted worthies of faith mentioned in chapter 11 each of whom despite handicaps and hindrances of every kind finish his course with joy amen amen oh that's the same joy that the apostle paul finished when he said i finished my course i have run the race i've kept the faith and there is laid up for me what a crown of righteousness they finish their course with with joy you see their faithfulness and endurance brought them victory in the race of life. Hear me somebody. The, admon the admonition to us is appealing to our conscience. We should run our race with the consciousness. Hear me somebody. With the consciousness as though the eyes of the faithful ones of all ages are now intently fixed upon us. And we are called upon to put forth our best effort. To put forth our best effort to, to win the race that has been marked out for us in the Christian race. Tell me somebody. In order for us, in order for God's people to stay focused or to keep their balance in the race marked out for them, they would have to, the first thing, keep 
their balance in the race. And if we are going to keep our balance in the race, the Apostle Paul says, that we must lay aside every weight. Uh-huh. Now, the, the Greek word from which weight comes from is okos, mean burden, mean impediment. And so whatever it is, whether it is evil association or worldly company, whether it's the consuming desire for material possession, the Apostle Paul says we must lay aside every weight. Amen. Now Ellen White says the path to heaven is already steep. Take no additional burden with you. Hmm. So brothers and sisters, Christians who are motivated by faith will not hesitate to dispose of anything and everything that might keep them from achieving their goal. Oh, brothers and sisters, we got to run to the finish line. And not only says we must lay aside the weight, but it says, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl has some besetting sin. Some tendency to evil. Which seeks to impede him or her as they run the race of life. You see, the question is, what is that sin that doth so easily beset you? Hmm, I can tell you what sin you have. You can tell me what sin I have. But whatever sin it is, the Apostle Paul says, you got to lay it aside. Hear me somebody, hear me somebody. Whatever that sin is, we have to lay it aside, brothers and sisters. We have to lay it aside. The, the, the sin that is so easily distract us. However close that sin may be, and however painful the process of separation may appear to be, it must be laid aside if victory in the Christian race is to be attained. Help us, Lord. So we got to keep our balance. That's my first point. We got to keep our balance in the race. The second point is this. In order for God's people to win the race marked out for them, they must run the race with patience. Amen? Amen. Run the race with patience. You see, in this Christian race, we need a lot of patience patience <laughs> oh yeah a lot and sometimes it look like if some some people's patience are running thin running out but we need a lot of patience in this Christian race in this Christian race we need we, we, we let, let, let me remind you rather let me remind us that we were once servants of sin. Did you hear me? Yes. Every one of us were once servants of sin, held captive by Satan's shackles. But I give praise to Almighty God because Jesus has broken those shackles and he delivered us from the prison house of Satan. Amen. Amen. Yes. My brothers and sisters, Satan will not sit back hear me he will not sit back and watch us enter the heavenly canaan the promised land just like that on flowery beds of ease must i be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others seek to what win the prize and sail to bloody seas brothers and sisters we got to run the race that is set before us with patience and perseverance. Hear me somebody, hear me. And let me take my time here because I need to make a point clear to everyone today. He would not, the devil, he, will, he would not try 
sorry, he would try to make life extremely difficult for all of us. You, you see, I, I read a book many years ago when I was in school, and, and it, it's it, by Scott Peck, um, great psychology, psychology, um, psych psychologist yes and he said the very first line of that book says life is hard life is difficult and so the devil he would make life extremely hard extremely difficult he will keep us if he can in our crucibles day and night but you see he would test our soul he will test our soul. He will try us to, or rather, he will tempt us. He would, he would test us on every point and on our weakest points. Do you know he knows our weakness as well? You know, Satan doesn't really know what is going on in our mind, but he, or rather, he cannot read our thoughts, what is going on there. But by our actions and by our words, we tell him what is going on in here. And as a result, he's able to form this temptation in such a way. And oftentimes, he's successful with his temptation. Oh, yes. Satan would make our journey extremely difficult with lots of obstacles and setbacks. But hear me somebody, but hear me somebody. But we don't have to be discouraged. We don't have to be become defeated because we have Jesus on our side. Amen. Amen. He is our captain. Praise the Lord. He would guide us as the song said, guide me Oh, great Jehovah, as pilgrim through this barren land. And it went on like that. He said, I am weak, but thou art what? Strong. Shield us with your powerful hands. And, and, and so he, 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 Jesus, he would not allow us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. Do you know that? Oh, yes. So when you are tempted, don't think that the temptation that comes to you is uncommon to man. The Bible says it's common. Everybody's being tempted. And the temptation, God will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to bear. It's like, you know what? Before the temptation can come to you, it must go to Jesus first. And Jesus weighs that temptation. I said, he's good enough for that. Let it go now to him. So brothers and sisters, and he says, he will not allow us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. And in every temptation, he will provide a way of escape. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And not only that, he would not allow us to be tempted above that which we're able to bear. We can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen. amen. Yes, we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. For we are more than conquerors. Come on. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So run the race with patience. Uh, and the word, the Greek word for patience is, is hupomoni. And it means, it means endurance. It means fortitude. It means steadfastness. It means perseverance. So when we are called upon, we are called upon to run the race with endurance, to run the race with fortitude, to run the race with steadfastness, to run the race with faithfulness, to run the race with perseverance. You see, brother and sister, because the race that we are called to run is a lifelong experience. It calls for a lot of patience and it calls for a lot of perseverance. It calls for a lot of fortitude if we would be able to win the race that is set before us. You see, when you are assailed by diverse temptation, be steadfast. Amen. Oh, you missed that. When, 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 when successive difficulties 
come on you. Oh, brothers and sisters, I say go on in the name of Jesus. When you are faced with disappointment, don't give up hope. Press on. Endure all the circumstances. For years, many years, William Wilberforce pushed Britain's parliament to abolish slavery, discourage he was about to give up the struggle. His elderly friend, John Wesley, heard about it and from his deathbed, John's, John Wesley's deathbed, he called for a pen and paper. And with trembling hands, Wesley wrote, Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you will be worn out by the opposition of men and demons. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Are they all stronger than God? And then he went on to say in, in that little script that he was writing, he said, oh, be not weary of well-doing. Go on, go on in the name of God and in the power of his might till slavery is vanished away. Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, Wesley died six days later. Wilberforce Continue the fight for another 45 more years. And in 1833, three days before his death, slavery was abolished in Britain. Oh, brothers and sisters, go on, he says. Go on in the name of Jesus and in the power of his might until slavery is vanished before thee. And I say the same thing, brothers and sisters. There is no problem to be for God. Oh, there is no problem too big God cannot solve. Did you hear me? challenges may cause frustration because and, and, and you may become depressed you see you may become perplexed you might be ready to throw your hands up in the air and quit serving the Lord but I say don't give up go on in the power of the name of Jesus and in the power of his might until you gain the victory over every sin Amen. over every struggle go on in the name of Jesus and in the power of his might and the third point that I must share with you is in order for God's children to win the race marked out for them, they must focus on Jesus. Mm. Focus on Jesus. So the first point, you must keep your balance in the race. The second point is that run your race with patience and the third point is you must run your race by focusing on jesus Amen. hebrews chapter 2 says looking unto jesus the what the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame and he set them where at the right hand of the throne of God. Why should I look unto Jesus? Well, that's not a foolish question. In fact, that's an important question. Well, we must look unto Jesus for grace and strength to overcome every difficulty and to endure unto the end. Amen? Amen. You see, Peter and the rest of the disciples were on the sea. And we are told that Jesus 
came walking on the water. And when the disciples saw it, they said, it's a ghost, it's a doppy, a, a zombie. They were afraid. And Jesus said to them, be not afraid, it is I. And Peter said to Jesus, the word is if in the Greek, or rather, the word is if in the passage, but in the Greek, it gives the meaning, since it is you, Lord, bid that I come unto thee. And Jesus said to Peter, come. Peter stepped out of the boat and Peter was walking on water. Man, no other, no other man had ever walked on water. And that must have given him some real pride. <laughs> I'm walking on water. Am I really doing it? And, and so Peter walking on water, we are told through inspiration that he turned around, and when he turned around, guess what he saw? He saw things. He saw the wind boisterous, the wave boisterous, and the wind were heavy blowing. Not only did he saw a thing, but he saw people. He saw the rest of the disciples in the, in the boat as well. And so in that very moment, Peter began to sink. Why? Because while he was walking on water, his eyes were what? Focusing on who? His eyes were focusing on Jesus. But the moment, the moment he took his eyes of the Savior and placed it on things, the moment he took his eyes of Jesus and placed it on people, you see, brothers and sisters, there's a message there for you and me. We must not take our eyes of Jesus to watch your brothers and sisters. They might, not, they might be at the source of discouragement to you. You see, you might see things that they're doing that might definitely cause you to stumble and fall. You might hear things that come from them that might make you tremble. But I say to you, while it is true that we expect a godly example for one another, I said to each one of you, keep your eyes on Jesus. As long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was walking on water. But the moment he took his eyes off the Savior, he began to sink. You see, brothers and sisters, it is dangerous to turn one's eyes away from the Savior even for a moment. Looking unto Jesus, for he is our author and leader. He is the originator. He is the founder. He is our pioneer. He is our prince. He's our captain. He's our Lord and he's our savior. Look unto Jesus. And if the author and founder of our faith is abiding in us and we in him, we will make it to the finish line amen. for we serve a mighty God come on say amen. amen we serve a mighty God we serve a God who is able to make all grace abound towards us amen you don't hear that my friend that second Corinthians 9 and verse 8 he says we serve a God who is able to make all grace abound towards you Amen. And then we have in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18, it says, We serve a God who is able to succor them that are tempted. Mm -hmm. We serve such a God. And then we have in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, The God we serve will not suffer us to be tempted above that we are able to bear, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that we may be able to bear it brothers and sisters and in, and in Hebrews chapter 
7 and verse 25, we are told, He is able also to save them to the utmost. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 17, this is possibly one of my favorite passages in the Bible. He says, Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Praise the Lord. And then we are told in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, he says, He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think to the power that worketh in us. Praise be to Almighty God. There is power to help us to live right. To help us in our walk with God. He is able, we are told, in Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, he says, he is able by the word of his grace to build you up and to give us an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Praise the Lord. That's a beautiful text. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12, I think it is, he says, I know whom I believe. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that. I know whom I believe. And he is able to keep me faithful until that day. My brothers and sisters, the great I am. He who is from everlasting to everlasting. The, the mighty God. The, the wonderful, the, the, the wonderful counselor, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the first and the last, the beginning and the ending. He is Alpha, He is Omega, He is able to keep us from falling and to present us without faults before his presence with great joy praise be to almighty god as long as we keep our eyes on jesus we can run the race that is marked out for us by laying aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us and by running that race with patience and perseverance and most of all, by looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Brothers and sisters, run your race to the finish line and God will meet you there. We want to say thank God for the message today and for the messenger we pray that the message will find lodgment in the deep recesses of our mind and draw us closer to God. We will end our worship today with a use of 629. 629.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, thank you for the message today and the reminders that we are in a spiritual race and that it doesn't really matter when we start the race, but it does matter how we finish the race. All of us have started this race and we are in different experience one way or the other, but we crave your grace. We ask for your spirit. We will stand on your promises. We'll keep our eyes on Jesus as we run to the finish line. You said, Lord, that they that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And so I pray in the hearing of my voice that you will save each person here. No matter what difficulty that we are going through, no matter the problem, the challenge, or the discouragement, or the frustration that we would experience, we ask, O oh Holy Father, that you will grant us your grace, that same grace, the grace of God which bringeth salvation, and which appeared to all men, teaching us that by denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We, we pray looking forward rather to that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that this hope will be made alive in everyone today and that, Lord, our faith will be rooted and grounded in Christ and that we would we would stand on the promises of God. We will run the race that is set before us with patience and perseverance. We, Lord, will not allow the things of the past. As the Apostle Paul says, we must forget the past, forgetting the past as we reach forward to that which is before us. Um, as we stress, we press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Grant, Lord, that the members of this church in this building at this time and those online will press on like the admonition from John Wesley. Go forward. Go forward in the name of Jesus and in the power of his might until we gain the victory over this life. Thank you, Lord, that we are not alone, but you will be with us until the end of the age. May you be glorified. May you be praising all that we do. And we thank you for the blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, oh. 